My name is Brady Balthazar. I'm a, a director and a designer. I'm working with Jeremy and I'm going to show you a little bit about the process of getting uh, these pieces animated. The first thing is to take them into uh, Adobe Photoshop and the trick with taking something um, that's a piece of flat 2D art and bring it to life in animation is that you need to make up for some of the information that's uh, that's not there once the thing starts moving. So for example, with this piece, there's some wings behind this finger and if I were to start moving the wing or the finger and the two separate, there would be some information missing behind them. So what we had to do is pull them onto different layers and then paint in the information behind stuff, basically. So when this wing starts moving, it'll be able to go beyond. That's the basic thing. So just basically taking all this stuff and separating it into layers and prepping it for animation. So the next part of the process to bring it to life as an animation is to bring it into uh, Adobe After Effects, which is also part of the Creative Cloud. And the process is basically to import the layered Photoshop files and then keyframe the movement so that they, you know, so that they move over time. I think some of the, uh, what's great about some of the Creative Cloud stuff is there's a community that you can, you know, share your art with and, and sort of go back and forth and, and collaborate and it just it makes it a lot smoother. I think there's some of the people that are working today that are more digitally minded are gonna, you know, as I think we're kind of in the infancy of this stuff and as we move forward, it's just gonna get more and more crazy. The beautiful thing about all this technology and the people that are able to access it now and learn to draw from that position, instead of coming from a background where none of this existed, and we're having to implement these technologies into our older formulas for making art. Mm. People now, it's like, this is all considered part of your tool set when you go to make art. And it isn't a matter of like having to be like, well, I'm command Zing over here and like yeah. backing up and doing things technologically. And then over here, I'm still like a caveman and I'm drawing it all yeah. with, with paint. And there is no going back. I mean, these kids are using this full skill set as just kind of here is my set of tools. And I think it enables you to do a lot more. I think the fact that you can constantly count on the fact that even if you're doing nothing more than a doodle in your sketchbook, it's like the, the idea that my, my command Z is an eraser. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in my sketchbook, I still need to have all this extra shit no, exactly. and sit there and be like, ah, it's still there. You can still kind of see it. And like, there are a million advantages to these things. And I think that it's an age gap that I'm faced with, you know what yeah. I mean? Like where I'm looking at these things and I'm like, I could find a way to implement that and do that. But I really am, a, I'm envious yeah, of the totally. younger audience who's like in a position to just have this set of tools all in front of them. And it's the way that you learn the process instead of having to bring it back in later on.